Next Door Neighbors is made possible by the support of the Nissan Foundation, by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by members of Nashville Public Television. It doesn't happen overnight. The crimes of generations past so fear in the hearts of their victims, their victims' children, and their children's children. Fear gives root to suspicion, and from this, hatred grows. It spreads like a vine, strangling reason, warping one's perspective and threatening to choke the life out of anyone in its path. No, it didn't happen overnight, but in just a few short months, more than 800,000 people were murdered in the Rwandan genocide. My family survived. That was 1994. Today, we're surrounded by a new family, the friends and neighbors that have made us at home here in Nashville for nearly 20 years. But even as we celebrate how far we've come, we can't help remembering where we've been. When we got to Nashville, actually, it was really difficult. One, because I didn't speak any English, and I didn't have friends. Not having friends is really difficult for, I think, a teenager or anybody, really. As Claude's youngest sister, I've always looked up to him. So hearing him describe the difficulties that I too experienced is comforting. Today, I work with refugee youth in Nashville, and I'm reminded that these children are desperate for a new normal because everything that used to be familiar has been forever changed. Prior to the genocide in Rwanda, I remember just being a, a worry-free kid, like most kids, where, you know, the biggest thing that I needed to know, wanted to know was, what time is my next soccer game? <laughs> what are we eating tonight? When can I see my friends? Can I sleep over my friends? Um, do I have to go to school today? Unfortunately, the promise of a worry-free childhood was shattered. In 1990, a brutal war shook Rwanda, which would act as a catalyst for the genocide to come. So now, I start hearing explosions, and there are armed robberies. We've got people getting shot or grenades going off in the neighborhood. And also some of the kids that I played with ended up leaving to become child soldiers. I mean, it was all kinds of just, you know, things that, you know, I would like to forget, but I would probably never forget. I too spent many years trying to forget. We were fortunate enough to escape Rwanda with our lives, but part of surviving means living with the past. Right after we came to the U.S. and maybe people who saw me or who met me at that time could tell that, you know, I had a lot of issues. At that time, I was really afraid to talk about these experiences because I felt like the killers would come after me. And it's actually very common for survivors of atrocities to never talk about it and you know, leave it in the past, and I tried that. And then something changed when I went to college. I came to a book of Frederick Douglass, and that was a major change, a major turning point. By the age of 21, he freed himself. And at the end of his life, he had made so much contribution to the abolition of slavery, he had no resources, and here I am, you know, I'm 20 years old, uh, and I'm sitting in the library, I have all these resources, I felt the need to speak out and I was inspired and you know ever since then I've basically become a, a human rights advocate uh, advocating mostly for people who are um, going through genocide and other massive atrocities. With Nashville now serving as home to hundreds of refugees each year, the real work is in our own backyard. New refugees arrive in Nashville every day, people who are healing people who are yearning to move on, people who are learning to live with their memories.